final one uh, after the short uh, sort of calling post game. Um, <laughs> I'm here to talk to you about Resin.io, and I guess it's a little bit typical for, for this event because we're actually not a hardware startup. Um, but we are a software startup that makes software for hardware startups. Um, can, can I get the next slide? Um, in, in particular, um, yeah. <laughs> so, in, in, in particular, uh, we're, we're bringing effectively what we've got as developers in the web world onto the uh, onto the hardware world. Um, this basically is my interpretation of a slide I saw in the last meetup uh, that, was, that was saying it was talking about the cycles in hardware. Um, you've got a you've got a hard product that's out there. Uh, you, you decide you want to update it in some way. Well, uh, that's uh, that's, that's, that's quite a story. You need to develop the, the, the new version, test it, manufacture it, warehouse it, ship it, sell it, find that somebody gets to use it. Now, if the update you want to do is in the hardware, that's a bit of a problem. We can't help you with that. But if the update you want to do is with the software, uh, that's, that's, where, uh, that's where we can help you. So, on the, uh, on the web, uh, next slide. We've, you know, we've got all these super duper technologies, uh, high level languages, New frameworks all the time, and HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript. On the server, we can use the same language we use uh, on the client with Node.js. Uh, huge ecosystem. Everything is nice, everything is peachy. Uh, next one. Uh, and when you look at the back end, it gets even, it gets even better. You know, we've got Amazon, they, they do all of these things for us that we used to have to do by hand. Um, and then Peru builds on top of that and uses Git. As a very easy way to deploy software, uh, and these days things are becoming, you know, we thought we had it good. It became even better with Docker. So um, Docker, for if you haven't heard of it before, it's the easiest way to explain it is think if you had a virtual machine, but you have you have no overhead on uh, on, the, on the code that's running inside it. Uh, you know, needless to say, the uh, the developer uh, operations community is uh, falling over. The it and the, the company that released Docker as an open source project, uh, Dot Cloud, is actually now called Docker Incorporated uh, because it's just, it's just doing fantastic work. Well. Um, so we've got all these tools on the web, and cycle time on the web is not months. Uh, it's, I don't know, minutes? You know, you, you, found it, you find a bug, you fix it, uh, and, that, and that's about it. So what, what we're trying to do at Resin is bring you know, that stack, those tools, onto, onto hardware. But let me, let me take a step back. Uh, next slide, please. Um, yeah, so, sorry. The, the, the main idea of, of what Resin is trying to do is make development of connected devices as easy as development in the cloud. Uh, next slide. So, um, has, oh, perfect. Has, has anyone, uh, has, have you guys seen one of these? There used to be one in New York. Uh, near Wall Street, but there's a lot of them, uh, a lot of them in London. Uh, they're basically recycling bins uh, with, with screens on them. And this is how we got started in the, uh, the hardware world. So we kind of inherited this project where this company was working for eight years to get a contract with the city of London uh, to deploy these things. And then a month after the launch, <coughs> their uh, digital finance provider uh, closed their doors. And they came to us and said, guys, hello. So we said, okay, well, you know, we know what technologies, we know uh, how the server uh, will work. So we'll just, you know, this is hardware, but it's fine. We just work right in like a, right in like a web system. And uh, that led to, you know, some uh, pretty funny uh, situations. <laughs> uh, that's my, that's my co-founder, Pay. Um, cold weekend in February of 2012. Uh, we had to go around and basically update a lot of these systems because they didn't have a remote access. Uh, mechanism in place. So uh, what, what we have to do uh, is, you know, these are a lot of systems. So we started out and we we did a lot of things by hand, and then eventually we started solving a lot of the problems uh, you, you you find. And at, at that point, we we kind of learned that we could solve these problems and we could make development process a lot easier than it, it typically is. So. Not only you know development for connected devices should be as easy as development in cloud, but it actually can be as easy as development in cloud. Um, the language we're focusing on, 
And you know, this is sort of, uh, some people love it, some people hate it, uh, but it's JavaScript. And the reason we're doing that is because JavaScript has actually got a lot of performance these days. I mean, it's not seen, but you know, it's not the JavaScript 2006. Uh, and the other thing, embedded devices are sort of a very weird hybrid that you need access to the hardware, and that's kind of like being on a server. Sometimes you need to interface with a user, and that's kind of like being in a browser. And the development cycle looks like a mobile device because you kind of attach it to your computer, and you need a feedback loop there. And that's uh, the, the only language that's got a good story across all of those scenarios uh, is, is actually JavaScript. So I guess a short way to put it is when the speed of evolution becomes more important than the speed of execution, perhaps you know, JavaScript and embedded, embedded devices can, can work really well together. Um, we're not the only ones talking about this, so uh, you had Tesla here a few days ago, a few, a few meetups ago, I think. Uh, Esperino is another, uh, another company starting uh, in, in, uh, in Cambridge, in, in England. Uh, and both of these are basically microcontrollers that run uh, JavaScript directly on the, on the hardware. Uh, NodeCopter and NodeBots are also very, very interesting uh, groups basically controlling hardware with JavaScript. Um, but of course there's commodity hardware. You know, there's the Beagle Bone, there's very cheap tablets coming out, uh, there's a Raspberry Pi, uh, or I mean, as we like to call it, Britain's own iPad. Um, and of course the, uh, the MK-08, which is actually a lot smaller than the, uh, uh, than the Raspberry Pi, and a lot more powerful. It's coming out of China, you know, the, the manufacturing quality is sort of up and down, but the, the device itself is pretty amazing. And two days ago, you know, it, it got even better, and it got Improve a lot of hardware coming out. Um, so there's there's very very nice hardware out there. It's strong enough to run JavaScript. And if you, if you want to like build an application using using these kind of patterns, um, you can you can do it really quickly. You can just connect the device to your computer. You can boot Node.js uh, and start writing your application. And you know you you get up to a point, and that's great. And then something happens, and then you sell millions, and everybody's happy. But the question is, what's that? What's that? Something happens, and the, the, the problem that we found while working on the uh, on the on our original project in Palm and Soul is that as soon as you go to the second device and you want to create uh, an application where all of the, all of your devices are constantly connected and you can deploy code all the time, uh, you sort of find a bunch of problems. So, what operating system are you going to run, and how are you going to update it? Uh, what execution kind of environment are you going to use? How are you going to connect all of your devices together? Um, are you going to know what's happening with the devices? Are they on? Are they off? Is there some kind of problem? Are you collecting the errors that are coming out of them? Uh, and finally, of course, how are you going to play code? And once you solve all of that, you can start writing an application. And the problem there, of course, is that as a hardware startup, you don't care about these things in the middle. You care about your device, and you care about your application, and that's that's where we come in, and these are the problems we're trying to solve. It was really, really interesting hearing um, the, uh, the CEO of Nest um, today, was it? Yesterday? Uh, talking about you know, why they sold to Google. He said, well, I was spending 90% of my time um, building infrastructure and 10% of my time building code. So, you know, this, this is sort of uh, part of what we're trying to help. Uh, the, the infrastructure can be done you know, by us. We, 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 that's our product, and we care about it. And um, we, we can we can kind of free your hands. So we use a bunch of open source. Um, you know, we're focusing on Raspberry Pi to begin with, uh, Linux, Node.js. We use Node we can connect everything in our our cloud stuff. And, uh, and Amazon, we use Git for deployment. Uh, and a very important thing is we we are actually using Docker. And that's uh, you know that's a pattern that uh, developers love. So they love Heroku, they love our cloud. To, in, in general, you know, this whole platform as a service thing um, is, is very, very popular with developers, and, and kind of Docker is the uh, kind of the new wonder kid in, in this uh, in this area. But um, sorry, yeah, there was, there was a problem with that, and the problem was when we, we wanted to use it, and if we couldn't use it, we would have to write it from scratch. Um, the problem there is that it didn't run on the Raspberry Pi; it actually didn't run on ARM at all. It was uh, it was made for 64-bit uh, Intel servers. Uh, so this is um, one of the things that we had to actually fix. And we ported Docker from 
uh, from Intel servers to work on, on Raspberry Pi. Um, so why, uh, what's, what's important about Docker? What would you want it in your, in your product? Um, with, uh, with a container, so Docker is basically a toolkit around Linux containers. Um, and it can contain everything you need. So you can put not only your software, but your dependencies, your libraries, everything you do inside a container. Um, you can build upon existing work. So if somebody else has made a container with maybe the version of the operating system you want, your container can be a small extension of that. It's difficult, and this is really big. So if you have you know, version one of your container, and you make some changes, uh, you can actually just find a small difference between these two versions and send that down the wire. So if you want to update your, your, uh, your application that's running in people's houses, um, you can just send what changes uh, in your operating system, uh, which is pretty efficient. I mean, when you talk about it, these things are really kind of important. Uh, even better, you've got rollback. So if you make a mistake about your, in, in your software, um, either a bug, you know, it happens. Yes, we all write tests, of course, but you know, bugs still happen. Or it has to do something with uh, hardware. Since it's, it's a bug that also only comes out of production. Um, using containers means you can go back. You can go back without compromising the device. You can go back without making it a brick and be able to apologize to anybody. And of course, Docker is different than what Heroku does internally because it's open source. And that means there's a whole ecosystem around that. Um, so this is, this is roughly our, our technology stack. The way it works is you download an image, you put it in your device, um, you power your device up. And just like that, you, it, it appears on your online dashboard of your devices. Um, you can push code to, uh, to our server, and we make sure that code reaches the device you, you connected to us. And you can repeat uh, the writing of the device step, so you can add as many devices as you want, and you can repeat the uh, pushing code to your device um, as many times as you want, as, as you can continue evolving your application. Um, to uh, what we've tried to do in these kind of four steps is practice something called machete design. And that came out of the Heroku team. Um, I think a, a, a very nice short way to explain uh, what machete design is, is that the value of the product is the number of problems they can solve divided by the amount of complexity the user needs to keep in their head to use it. So, you know, if you're thinking of adding that little feature in your new product that will make it just that little bit harder to use, you can kind of run this equation you had to sort of figure out, um, is it worth it? Uh, most of the times it's not. Most of the times you don't need that extra button, you don't need that extra uh, com complication. Um, so another thing we've done uh, to get, uh, so we had the idea we put it together. Um, and the, the next question is, you know, how do, how do people get to, uh, to know about us? And that's where we use the fact that we have made that progress with Docker. And Docker is a pretty hot topic uh, in the kind of hacking music business. Um, so we basically did the work, we open sourced it, uh, and we blogged about it. And uh, that really got attention in the hacking news crowd. And of course, you know, Docker has its own subreddit and everything else. Um, and that really got us our first, I don't know, maybe 200 people interested. And since then, we've been able to continue doing that. Um, we're basically at the point where this can be done pretty reliably. Uh, you can, if you, if you make a technical product and it's interesting enough, and you talk about the interesting technical bits you've done in an interesting way, you can get people to pay attention to what you're doing. Uh, and this, I don't think, has been the, has been the case uh, until recently. Um, for us, Twitter and Facebook have been a big source of traffic, but only as a secondary traffic. So when you have, you have a big hit, then it, um, then it brings people through, sort of people will tweet about it, and then it'll, it'll, bring, uh, it'll bring traffic back. Um, so this is it. Um, this is our visitor website, and you can go and give us your, your email if you want to know more. Um, Twitter accounts, what technology we cover. Thank you very much.